Now I would like to hand over to Dr. Paul Karinoki, who is the director of DDP. Dr. Paul Karinoki, good, good, good day. <laughs> good day, Shiva. I'm very happy to be here. Yes. In brief, I would like you to just give you a, a give us a brief about DDP. Right. Um, DDP is an organization that was established 30 years ago. And DDP's work and vision is to build strong and active communities that can be able to engage uh, with leaders and hold them accountable for their actions and for their decisions and the work that they do. Uh, we have been actively involved uh, in various communities throughout KwaZulu Natal, and uh, we, even though we are based here in Durban, we work nationally through our partners, and our work has been around eight areas of our work. One is to build a strong civil society that is able to hold their leaders accountable. Mm -hmm. Secondly, is to work with political parties to encourage them uh, how they can work with the citizens and be able to co-govern together with them to be held accountable for their decisions and at the same time also to engage with them so that we can deepen the democracy that we see in our country. And the third area of our work is to working with women and youth in terms of in managing and developing their capabilities to work in a political space and by giving them um, skills and knowledge that make them to um, actively engage with political leadership, demand accountability, and together promote good governance. Uh, the fifth area that we are working with at the moment is uh, working with traditional leadership in helping them also to co-govern with partners within their jurisdiction be they citizens, communities, or civil society organizations. And lastly but not least, the area of democracy and civic education, which we work with various communities, the independent electoral commission, political parties, civil society organizations, and other agencies, always to motivating citizens to participate in an election because we believe the power of a, of a citizen is actually on their vote. And if they can be able to use their vote wisely, they can change what they don't like. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Paul Karioki. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Dr. Paul Karioki, mm -hmm. uh, my first question to you is that what is the view of the DDP on the issue of government coalition that is taking place in some of our municipalities around the country? We view as DDP, we see it's, a, it's an opportunity to embrace change. Yes. Um, and the change that has been promoted because of um, the situation that the country has found itself in. Yes. Over the last 30 years, we have seen a significant change in the political space. Yes. We have new entrants, uh, new parties that are coming on board, trying to uh, advance a particular course in trying to change the situation that the electorate has been seeing and experiencing and because of that new entrance, we're seeing that the, 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 the challenges that ordinary citizens have been experiencing have forced them to start exploring alternative political homes mm -hmm. that kind of uh, embrace their aspirations and promise to a great extent that they can be able to address those issues mm -hmm. that are making citizens to feel uh, disenfranchised left out from the scent of decision making mm -hmm. and to a large extent they feel they're not taken seriously mm -hmm. um, and as a voting public those issues are of a big concern because when they cast their vote mm -hmm. uh, for a particular party expecting that the elected officials mm -hmm. are going to uh, hold themselves accountable for the electoral promises that they gave mm -hmm. and then when they are elected and they go into parliament at whichever level of governance, whether it's at the municipal level, provincial, national, and they don't do what they promised. It creates uh, a situation of distrust. And over time, 
the voting public has has decided enough is enough. Yes. And therefore that has created opportunities for other political parties to come up with uh, possibilities that are making citizens to want to explore mm -hmm. and give them a chance to, pro to do what they are promising, that they can change their status quo, they can improve service delivery, for example. Mm -hmm. They can assist in addressing crime and gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. They can assist in creating opportunities for economic uh, development. And mm -hmm. all those things that are making the voting public to be distressed with the current political uh, parties that have been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the coalition governing, therefore, has come in at a time when citizens are looking for alternatives, mm -hmm. alternative political uh, parties that can be able to help them realize what this democracy promised to them pre-1994. And at the dawn of democracy, the sense of hope was that these challenges that we're dealing with, especially around basic service delivery, mm -hmm. will be a thing of the past. Yes. It hasn't changed. A lot has been done, we cannot deny, but there is still more to be done and it seems like now the pace has become even more slower as we see more incidences of corruption mm -hmm. and maladministration mm -hmm. and political infighting mm -hmm. that has really slowed the pace of service delivery. Therefore, parties are now coalescing their capabilities to put up a front uh, as a network or a coalition Mm -hmm. that can address these issues decisively and be able to give citizens what democracy looks like for them. We must not forget that democracy is a lived experience. Mm -hmm. If people cannot get water into their homes, through yes. in their taps, when people cannot get lights in their home, mm -hmm. when they do not have access to basic sanitation, mm -hmm. when, uh, when children cannot have access to education because they cannot go to school. Yes. All those issues add up to the, the disappointment that we're seeing in the public. Partly is the reason why majority of sections of our population are deciding not to participate in voting because they feel let down. Mm -hmm. So coalition governing is coming at a time to address those issues, yes. but there's also challenges that the coalition government political parties need also to address for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I'll just mention three. Mm -hmm. One is to agree on a compelling vision yes. that is bigger than the political parties. Okay. At the moment, we are seeing a jostling of power mm -hmm. in majority of municipalities where we have coalition governing. Mm -hmm. And that is sending a wrong message to the voting public. Mm -hmm. Because again, the idea is that the interest of ordinary citizens mm -hmm. and communities, it's not at the heart of why they want to govern. Yes. Second thing is that these political parties need to have a coalition agreement mm -hmm. so that there is no room for manipulation. Mm -hmm. We have seen a lot of them crumbling even before they start working. Mm -hmm. And because of that, they are also sending a wrong message mm -hmm. that they are not capable to be trusted yes. with a leadership responsibility. Mm -hmm. Of, of, of governing. And the third part, of course, is to agree that political parties, just like any other institution, mm -hmm. must be governed well. Mm -hmm. And when political parties do not have a record of ethical leadership themselves, mm -hmm. where they're able to call out their own uh, comrades, mm -hmm. for example, when they are found in the wrong, mm -hmm. or when they are doing things that are not consistent with our law, mm -hmm. And when political parties do not have the courage to call on their own with their own, they're doing wrong, then they're telling us as a voting public, you can't trust us. Yes. And so those are the things that I think need to be considered now because we have entered an, an era of coalition governing and it's the, it seems that we're going to stay in that era for a long while right. until <laughs> yes. we get things right. <laughs> No, we really are in trouble. <laughs> and then uh, 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 the, the next one is that what is the best possible thing that can, citizens can do to stop smaller political parties from selling their votes to the highest bidder just to get power in positions while service delivery is being compromised? Because we can see from what we are seeing is that you know this coalition uh, 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 idea came as a result of uh, uh, the, 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 the failure 
by the ruling party mm. to, to, to win the hearts of, of voters. Yes. Therefore, then everybody came on board, you know, the existing smaller uh, uh, political uh, uh, organizations and the new ones. Mm. And now we're going to get independent ones mm. who will be even wanting to become our president, mm. you know. So mm. we want to know what is your view as PPP. Firstly, I think we, <clears throat> one on one hand, we celebrate the, the 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 incoming of different political parties into the political space, mm -hmm. which creates uh, options for citizens to choose. But at the same time, also puts the bigger political parties that are being there on their toes, so to speak, mm -hmm. to know that it's not going to be a free ride for mm -hmm. a long time, <laughs> and. Um, um, the idea of having them coming on board to add their voice and to help us to deepen this democracy in our country, mm -hmm. there are things that they also need to do right as smaller parties. Number one is must also they must firstly respect their constituency. Mm -hmm. The constituency that has given them the opportunity to even enter into leadership spaces. Yes, yes. They must not betray that trust. Mm -hmm. And so when they sell their votes, for example, to the mm -hmm. highest bid, what they're actually saying is that it's like a slap on the face of their constituency yeah. to say we do not respect you, we do not honor you, and we're not interested in even in what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. But now we say that we want to show that smaller parties can be able to be trusted yes. if they come to a place where they can show responsibility of some sort. Mm -hmm. At the same time, also we want to see that smaller parties can arise above the mistakes of the dominant parties. Yes. Some of the mistakes of the dominant dominant parties is to disenfranchise mm -hmm. the constituency. In other words, once they have been elected and gone to to legislation to legislature, they disconnect completely mm -hmm. from the people who gave them the mandate to go there, mm -hmm. and they only be seen at the next election cycle. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that the smaller parties do not repeat the same. So firstly, respect the constituency that has put you to power mm -hmm. or given you the opportunity to come next to a leadership opportunity. Mm -hmm. Secondly, understand why you've been there. Yes. The same vision that you sold to the electorate that garnered their support mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. needs to be respected. And thirdly, our view is that they need to be exposed to training. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is important for them to understand that the political space mm -hmm is as technical as any other institution mm -hmm. and you need to understand how it functions yes. to be able to produce um, a compelling vision mm -hmm. that is beyond uh, party interests, mm -hmm. that is beyond individual interests of the leaders, yes. a compelling vision that really encapsulates the needs of the society mm -hmm. and that it's able to be sustained on a long term. Uh, and I think smaller parties, majority of them have not gotten to the place where they can be able to provide a compelling vision that is beyond the interest of either of the party leadership mm -hmm. or beyond the party itself. And thirdly, they must also explore opportunities to equip themselves yes. with the necessary uh, information that will help them to function optimally mm -hmm. in the South African political landscape that is very complex, highly dynamic, at the same time also very demanding. Yes. yes. Thank you. And then our last, the third one, is that considering the 2021 local government election voter turnout was at its lowest by 30.52% compared to 57% of 2016. Now, what is the GDP plan of action to encourage citizens to exercise their democratic rights by voting in the next 2024 election? We have embarked on throughout this year, uh, through our various <coughs> programming activities to mobilize citizens from across uh, our society um, here in KZN and outside of KZN through our partners, mm -hmm. uh, both in rural areas and in urban areas. Mm -hmm. And we, our message is that, number one, it's a civic responsibility that we cannot um, assume. Yes. If we do not participate, we are endorsing those who do not share our aspirations and giving them an opportunity to continue doing what we don't like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we are going out there with a message to say that 
it's the only weapon we have yes. as ordinary citizens that can be able to change the status quo, mm -hmm. the vote. And if you do not use it, what you are also doing without knowing, mm -hmm. you are saying that what I see can continue as far as it wants to continue. Mm -hmm. And we all know that we are buckling under, you know, uh, severe basic services delivery that is not being done properly. Mm -hmm. We are we are crumbling with energy and you know, load shedding. Mm -hmm. uh, we are seeing massive uh, loss of jobs and all those things. Mm -hmm. At some stage, we as citizens must be active. Yes. Not only just to, you know, uh, point out the mistakes mm -hmm. or the challenges that we see, mm -hmm. but on the other side to say we are willing to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. By casting your vote, mm -hmm. you are exercising your ability to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. And if whether your party wins or not, mm -hmm. you need to see to your concerns that as a citizen, a law-abiding citizen, you are fulfilling your civic responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the, uh, the other messages that we, we, we are promoting through our work. And thirdly, we are educating the public mm -hmm. to understand what does voting look like mm -hmm. in a coalition government. Yes. What is a coalition government? Yes. What do you look for mm -hmm. as a citizen mm -hmm. that you would want to com it will compel you to particularly subscribe mm -hmm. with a coalition governing mm -hmm. closest to your, to, to your area? Mm -hmm. Because we believe an informed citizen mm -hmm. is able to make a better decision at the ballot box yes. and also prevents a citizen to be taken advantage of mm -hmm. by politicians, especially during campaigning season, mm -hmm. because they, they do what they do best. Yes. They tell you what you want to hear, mm -hmm. but they probably don't even mean it. Yes. But you as a citizen, you have the responsibility to inform yourself, yes. what does this message mean to me? Is there a track record that I can be able to show party X is asking me for my vote? What have they done in the last electoral cycle? Yes. So that you are able to understand what does my vote mean then? Yes. Yeah? And if the party X is going into coalition with party Z mm -hmm. and party Y yes. and party Q, mm -hmm. what does that coalition represent? Mm -hmm. What do I need to look for as a citizen so that I can make a better decision? Mm -hmm. So we are doing work like uh, with those kind of um, interventions yes. to ensure that the public is well uh, informed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before the 2024 election so that they are not confused mm -hmm. and they are able to make good decisions when the time comes for them to cast their vote. And we are very confident that as we continue to send this message across our province mm -hmm. and throughout the country through other means, um, we are influencing the public opinion. Yes, yes. That the, the voting public will start to think about seriously about how they will cast their vote mm -hmm. and that they will decide not, not to participate. They will go in there mm -hmm. and do what they need to do because that's what a law abiding citizen should do at all times. The, lastly, we, whilst we recognize that there is a lot of despondency in the public at the moment because yes. of what they've been exposed to, mm -hmm. the disappointment uh, and the letdown by some of the elected political representatives. Our message is that look beyond that. Yeah. Look beyond the disappointment. Mm -hmm. See these 2024 elections as a new chance, mm -hmm. a new opportunity yes. to do something about what you're unhappy with. Mm -hmm. There is a, you know, uh, an arrangement of political parties that have a compelling message. Mm -hmm. See who comes close to what you aspire. Yes. Then cast your vote. But do not sit at home yes. and decide not to cast your vote because you're not helping our country. Thank you, Dr. Paul Karioke. So, in short, Dr. Paul Karioke is telling the voter that please go and vote so that we, we, we try and, 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 and minimize this issue of coalition because it is as a result of people not wanting to go and cast them.